Hello, hello. Welcome back to Peak Northwest, an outdoors and travel podcast by the Oregonian and Oregon Live, dedicated to the adventure and exploration of our beautiful Pacific Northwest. I'm Jamie Hale. And I'm Vicki Connor. Together, we take you to some of the most beautiful and interesting destinations in our region, discussing where to go, what to do, and places to see. And last week, we took a look back at some of our favorite adventures of 2022, and today we are looking ahead, scheming and dreaming of trips for the year ahead. That's right, Vicky. One of my favorite stories to do every year is the Northwest Travel Guide, a list of 25 places to check out around the region, which is usually based on trips I've taken and trips I'm hoping to take in the year ahead. So that guide just came out as this podcast is being released, and it's got me excited to get some travel plans on the books. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to read it all because we are recording this right now and I have not seen any of it. So, (laughs) Um, Jamie, I have to ask you though, because you are a native to the Portland region and you have been our travel reporter for such a number of years... Sometimes I'm like, oh my, Jamie's seen it all. Like he's seen Mm -hmm. every corner of this region. (laughs) Now people, people always assume that, but the thing is there's so much to see (laughs) and so many places to go. I get this whenever people are like, oh, you know, I'm sure you've been on this hike or whatever. And I'm like, you know how many hikes there are? How how many trails there are in in Oregon, let alone Oregon and Washington? Um, No. So, I mean, there's always new places I'm looking to go. And places I'm eager to return, maybe in a different season or in a different context. Um, Absolutely. Or you know, pl- so I kind of look at this travel guide as um, as a wish list for myself, but also as sort of um, a, a way to look back at some of the best places I've gone to, my favorite places, or spots that might just be you know really appropriate for this year ahead. I think that's a way to look at it too. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. Well, let's kick this off. Where should we get started? Well, the way I organize the travel guide is into five sections. So we've got um, towns to visit, um, outdoor um, destinations, uh, lodging, different attractions to see along the way, and then some cool road trips to take. So if we go in that order, let's go ahead and start off with some some towns. All right, let's do it. What's first? Well, one of the, the, the first towns on my list, and this is maybe a little bit of um, not a, an exciting choice as a lot of places. Um, and I think both of these towns I'm going to recommend are maybe fall into that category. But the first one is Salem, state capital of Oregon. Um, I think a lot of people don't like to go to Salem. I think there's this idea, especially those of us in Portland, of Salem being like, not exciting or like there's not a lot going on there. But mm-hmm. in fact, there is a lot to do in Salem. So I went mm-hmm. um, a couple years ago in the springtime and um, saw all kinds of beauty in Salem, all these gardens around the city. There's so many beautiful gardens and all of these trails and beautiful parks. There's a, a wonderful bridge um, going across Demento Brown Island. And there's a bunch of really good food there too. I mean, no surprise, you know, with the great food scene in Portland, there's going to be a good food scene in Salem as well. So mm-hmm. I, I think it was, it's a great spot to spend either a day, but I think the way to do it is to maybe spend the night and spend a couple of days exploring that whole area, especially in the springtime. So if you're looking for an easy, quick day or weekend trip this spring, go check out Salem. Do yourself a favor. Don't sleep on it and go experience all it has to offer. Yeah. I haven't spent too much time in Salem, kind of just driving through on my way going down south. But I have, in fact, seen your uh, video when you did a short video kind of just exploring great things in Salem. Um, And I remember quite specifically some beignets. Oh, my God. They were they were um, beignet chicken sandwiches is what they were. Oh my God. <laughs> um, which was, uh, horrible to eat on camera, I will say. Um, but they were delicious. They were d- stupid how good they were. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think that, yeah, that would be on my list if I'm, if I'm visiting. Yeah. All right. So we got Salem. Uh, what other town are we thinking of for 2023? The other one I pulled off of this list was the town of Forks in Washington. And again, Mm. not a destination town that people normally think of because Forks is very small and not a ton to do there unless you're a big fan of the Twilight 
book and movie series, in which case there's a ton for you to do there. <laughs> but for everyone else, Forks is mostly a place to stay while you're exploring Olympic National Park. And that's why I like it. So if you're looking to stay in like a town where there are like hotels and some places to eat, um, Forks is sort of your main go-to option on the Olymp Olympic Peninsula. And it gives you such good access to so many different areas of Olympic National Park. So it is, I think, one of the closest areas to go backpacking on the northern stretch of coast there. You can drive mm -hmm. really quickly to La Push, um, where there is some great trailhead and beach day use areas. It's very close to all of the rainforest trails, and it's also a quick drive over to Hurricane Ridge where you can see some incredible mountain views. So Forks is just sort of uniquely situated to see a lot of stuff in Olympic National Park. And unless you're staying at like, you know, one of the, the lodges in the park or you're staying at, you know, some sort of quaint cabin that you've rented or you're camping or something like that. Um, Forks is, a, I think, a really nice option to stay there and a bonus if you're really into Twilight, too. Absolutely. Uh, I have not made my way to Olympic National Park yet, so it's good to know that that's kind of like a gateway town uh, to getting access to the park. But in addition to that, I will say that the Twilight series was very formative to my middle school <laughs> years. And I feel like any, any one of my friends, you know, even my friends who came out to visit um, in the early summertime, they're like, oh, man, what like Twilight things are in the region that we can see. And yeah. Twilight and Forks go hand in hand. And right when you said La Push, like I automatically thought of like a Twilight quote where they're just like, La Push, baby. <laughs> um, so I I think I would, although I'm not like the, the biggest Twilight fan in the world, I would definitely be down to see some of, uh, some of the highlights from filming uh, in the area. And I know that even some of the stuff is like down here in Oregon where they actually filmed, but... Forks and Twilight, hand in hand. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so those are our towns um, that we have on this list for 2023. Let's get into some of the outdoor adventures you have. Well, like I mentioned, Vicki, so many different outdoor adventures to do in the Pacific Northwest. How do you choose? Um, so I choose a couple of spots, um, from last year to pull out today that I Amazing. really, really enjoyed. The first one is some of the waterfalls of the South coast range in Oregon. So mm. the coast range, obviously the mountain range between the Willamette Valley and the coast. And, um, there are a ton of waterfalls throughout the coast range, which mm -hmm. should make, I think some sense to people. Um, I have done a couple trips to the ones in the North coast range and some in the South coast range. And I think with the South coast range in particular has some really, really nice concentrated areas of waterfalls. In particular, mm -hmm. there's, um, the Kentucky falls area where this is a trail where you can see several waterfalls, several really good waterfalls on one relatively short hiking trail. And the trail ends with this uh, viewpoint where you can see two waterfalls coming off like the, the the creek will like split and goes around and creates these two waterfalls that you can see at once um from oh this one gosh. viewpoint and it's really really cool um so that the kentucky falls area is a great place to go also sweet creek is an area where there's a bunch of smaller waterfalls but a really uh -huh. again pretty easy hiking trail not very long um, and if you go during the rainy season to these places, um, like I did last winter or in the springtime, it is just such a good time to go. The waterfalls are going so hard and it's just phenomenally beautiful. Ah, oh, I love it. Tips from a pro right here about when to, <laughs> when to visit these places. Okay. Amazing. That sounds so cool. We'll get into some of the things that I'm looking forward to, but the South coast is like really exploring the south coast and spending a good amount of time there is on my list for 2023 so we'll make a note to visit some of these waterfalls <laughs> okay um what's up next for other outdoor adventures i love the lower rogue river as a great outdoor destination because there's so much you can do there so the rogue river um runs basically from around crater lake down to the coast at gold beach um, the lower stretch of that river has um, some of the best backpacking wilderness you've got in the area. Um, some really, you know, pretty, pretty good, like easier or intermediate backpacking. 
Um, this is the first mm-hmm. place I ever went backpacking and, um, it was a great place to sort, sort of, you know, break your, your, your hiking boots in, if you will. Uh-huh. Um, great place to do that, but it's also a great place to go rafting or whitewater kayaking. So as you're backpacking along the trail, you look down at the river and there are rafts going by constantly. There are constantly people going up and down that river. Um, uh-huh. the water there is just beautiful. Um, so you can do, so either backpacking or day hiking, you can do rafting, you can do kayaking, and there is a great jet boat service that also goes up the lower road river from gold beach to this place called paradise lodge, which is Mm -hmm. a great place to stay. If you're looking to stay the night in the wilderness, it is a a little lodge there, um, that has hosted, you know, I think Elijah Wood stayed there and I want to say Barbara Bush stayed there. They've got like, you know, pictures in the wall of like famous people who have stayed at the Paradise <laughs> Lodge. Um, but they'll give you like, you know, uh, a good square meal or two and a nice bed. So I stayed in the Paradise Lodge one night while I was backpacking the trail and it was the best decision I think I ever made. Um, just a, again, a, a really, really beautiful spot where you can find this like, you know, really rugged wilderness as well as some really nice amenities, um, for people who don't want to go all out in that area. Oh my gosh. Wow. I think I've heard some things about this backpacking trip, but maybe that's a story for later (laughs) on. (laughs) I think so. (laughs) Okay. All right. So some great inspiration for people uh, looking for some outdoor adventure in 2023. Although, you know, obviously there is a whole world out there uh, in this region of things to explore. Um, So when we're talking about these great outdoor adventures, got to talk about the lodging and places to stay. Uh, Where are you looking to stay in 2023? Well, one of the places that's high up my list is a spot that I've been meaning to check out forever. When you talk about places that like, you know, uh, I should have gone to or people might think that I've gone to. This Mm -hmm. is one that I have not yet done. Um, So this is, of course, Brighton Bush Hot Springs. Uh, Brighton Bush is, is there, um, in the central cascades, uh, just outside of Salem. And it is, uh, it's supposed to be, it looks like a a great place to be. Uh, this Mm -hmm. is an area that got burned severely in wildfires back in 2020, along with, um, Opal Creek wilderness there. Um, so they've, they lost a lot of what they used to have, but they have been rebuilding since then and bringing people back. And it looks just like a, a phenomenal spot. So they have a lot of uh, natural hot springs there, which you mm-hmm. can soak in. Um, heads up, that I think I think they are typically clothing optional, except for some certain days. So if that's not your thing, maybe don't do that. But mm-hmm. um, and they have um, some nice cabins and places to camp, and they they you know have uh, you know a full kitchen. They will serve you meals, like really good, healthy meals. It's like a place to go where you, if you really want to, sort of rejuvenate yourself or just like eat well and, you know, soak and be out in in nature. I have a lot of friends who, who are into that sort of thing, who just swear by Brighton Bush. And it's a spot that I've been dying to go out and check out. Oh my gosh. I've actually researched this place quite a bit. And sadly, I think the weekend that I had open in my schedule, they were all like booked for that weekend. But Brighton Bush looks so cool. And if you look up like some of the pictures online, there's like these cool, like rustic looking bathtubs where you can soak in. It's listed online that it's a great place. Uh, obviously, like you said, for a retreat and like doing yoga and stuff. Uh, as a yoga teacher, that's something that I'm very much interested mm-hmm. in. Uh, and yeah, you can't beat a place to just kind of relax and get away from things, but also soak in some hot springs. Like it sounds like the wellness retreat of my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm, I, I just need, I think need to just find a weekend and just book it. Um, yeah. so I don't, you know, I think every year I miss it. I think, Oh, that's a great place to go. Let me keep it in the back of my mind. But I think I just need yeah. to book a date and just have it there. Um, so I can't, I can't miss out again. Exactly. Ah, oh, it looks so cool. And you can't beat a place that's like, well, there's there's something nice about finding hot springs just like in the middle of nowhere with not a lot going on. But when it is kind of maintained at a place like this and there are other amenities, you know, it's a different experience. Other things to look forward to is really nice as well. Absolutely. 
Well, so Brighton Bush Hot Springs, I think, is in one end of the or one style of the sort of relaxing getaway. And the next spot is, I think, on the, the other <laughs> end of that spectrum. Okay. This is the Salish Lodge and Spa. So um, this is a place that is just really right outside Seattle. If you're heading east from Seattle along Interstate 90, sort of along Snoqualmie Pass, which is a great place to go take a drive, um, mm -hmm. one of those spots that you might pass by or pass near is the Salish Lodge and Spa which is right along the Snoqualmie River and just situated right above Snoqualmie Falls. So it's a really, really scenic location. People who, who watch Twin Peaks might recognize this as you know a, a spot prominent in the credits, the opening credits mm -hmm. for that show. Um, but it is also a really lovely sort of decadent place to stay. So this is, again, this is a spot that is expensive. Um, this is a place where you, you, you know, if you can, um, you're, you're going to be spending some serious money here to do this. So if you, if you have that, or if you have a, a, a very nice friend, um, <laughs> who wants to like do something extremely nice for you, um, this is a really cool spot to go check out. And I think, you know, if, if for nothing else, just like that, that view of the waterfall right there below the the hotel, and this like wow. luxurious spa. It's like so nice. It's a kind of the place that I feel like I dream about going to. Um, uh -huh. I will probably not actually ever go to. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. um, but I really hope that people who have the means to do it go check it out so I can like, you know, live vicariously through them. That's that's my that's my hope for a Salish Lodge and Spa. Yeah. When I am on this website right now, it just exudes luxury you know <laughs> i i love getting spa treatments as a treat and like some of these offerings the hydrofacial package you know some of these things I'm like dang this sounds so nice and in a beautiful setting ah uh, wow i'll save my pennies <laughs> <laughs> i kind of even just want to like go to like the waterfall and get like get like a picture of like that waterfall and of the lodge i just want to look at it from afar it makes me feel like such a popper or something but like <laughs> i want to just look at it because it's so beautiful right there um and you know the twin peaks connection is really cool also i don't know yeah There's something about that, that is super cool i love it well even if we never make it there it's nice <laughs> it's nice to dream <laughs> Okay, so we've gone over towns, we've gone over outdoor adventures, places to stay. Um, what other kind of general attractions are you looking forward to in 2023? Well, there's so many good little places to stop. I've kind of been thinking about, um, you know, roadside attractions is sort of, you know, I think people have this idea of what those are. Um, but I think about them as just like, if you're driving along a main road or a highway, you want to get off and stretch your legs. Where's an interesting place to do that? And this first spot I'm pulling out is exactly that. Um, so this is the Pacific Bonsai Museum, um, which is a really, really cool spot. It's right off I-5, um, right in Tacoma. So if you're driving up to Seattle or, or in points farther north, you need to pull off and take a break, but you don't want to just do it at a gas station or whatever. Yeah. The Bonsai Museum, again, literally right off the interstate. And it features like over 100 bonsai trees. Um, I have not seen a collection of bonsais like this or of this magnitude outside of like the National Arboretum in Washington, D.C. This mm -hmm. is, I think, probably one of the or if not the best bonsai collections on the West Coast. It's yeah. it's funny, though. This It's at the headquarters of Weyerhaeuser, which is like the um, big timber giant. So mm -hmm. uh, folks I, mean, I know who who have feelings about that. Um, about logging may have, you know, certain feelings about going to that headquarters, but it's a really, really cool collection. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, what, whatever your feelings are about Tacoma, about Weyerhaeuser, about pulling off I-5, this is a <laughs> definitely a really, really is good spot that's, that's worth it. So, yeah. um, I went there a number of years ago now and walked around to these little bonsais and you can just spend all day looking at each individual bonsai and, seeing the work that goes into it and the artistry of it, it's it's incredible. It is so cool. They have maybe not as many as uh, here at the Pacific Bonsai Museum, but at the um, Portland Japanese Garden, they have a number of bonsai on display, um, I think temporarily, actually. Um, 
But those are so cool. So I would love to see kind of like a bigger um, display of them. And like you're saying, the like meticulous care that goes into taking care of these of these bonsai is incredible. And then also seeing like how old some of them are yeah. is, is insane. Um, and there are just, you know, such a variety. Um, it's just breathtaking to kind of see uh, the different changes as you walk by and see how different they can be. Hundreds of years old, some of these things. And there are people taking yeah. care of them with like tweezers. It's yeah. <laughs> wild. I saw a guy working on one when I was out there and just kind of watched him for a while. And we talked for a bit. Um, and just, it was, it was incredible to watch someone actually care for bonsai trees. Just absolutely fascinating. So Pacific Bonsai Museum, highly recommend it. Oh, all right. What else? What other attractions? Well, when the other one I'm pulling off my list this year is one that you and I did uh, up in Joseph. And that's the Wallawa Lake Tramway. Uh, mm -hmm. Vicky, you may remember this. Uh, it was such a cool experience. This is a, an aerial tramway that takes you from um, Joseph, just south of town, uh, along the edges of Wallawa Lake, up to a spot in the Wallawa Mountains. So it is a very sort of steep uh, aerial tram, but the, the views are just absolutely breathtaking. Yeah, it was so cool. Um, I have been on a few different tramways in my life. This one, it's interesting because the car is so small. I had not been so in small. a tramway car <laughs> like this. Um, so I was like, it kind of freaked me out a tiny bit. But uh, the views as you go up are so incredible. And how long would you say that ride was from the bottom all the way to the top? Oh, that's a great question. It was like I can't remember. 10 or 15 minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, as you're going up, you get this incredible view of Alawa Lake, obviously, and it just gets like slowly smaller and smaller as you go up. And um, then once you're at the top, you can enjoy a great lunch. Mm -hmm. um, you can go for a little hike, take in the views, make um, some furry friends that <laughs> we saw at the top. <laughs> um, the little like... not. Were they chipmunks? Probably. Something oh, like gosh. That. I want to say I've called them chipmunks before and a reader responded that they, they were not. They were <laughs> something different. I can't remember exactly what that is, but little, little, little ground rodents, if you will. Yeah, little, little furry ground rodents that were pretty cute. And yeah, oh my gosh, it was so cool. There's like a tiny bit like patches of snow when we went, even though it was like kind of summertime. Um, and I always love the difference between like uh, the bottom of the tram and just like, you know, chillier temperatures, a little mm -hmm. bit of snow once you get to the top and obviously incredible views. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's a little expensive to take a ticket up there. Yeah. Um, but I, I would say that it is definitely worth it. It is one of the cooler attractions in Oregon and you just really cannot beat those views and that experience. Yeah. Even if you just do it once, because mm -hmm. you do it once, you go to the top, you eat cobbler, come That's back right. down, maybe explore a little bit. <laughs> That's right. cobbler up at that altitude. Amazing. Ah, oh, so good. So good. All right. So last section um, in this list, what road trips should people look to do in 2023? Well, the first road trip I'm pulling out, Vicky, is again, another one that you and I both did for uh, our Peak Northwest video series. And that is the Fruit Loop in Hood River. My yes. gosh, what a cool little trip to take. So cool and so, so much to do and see that, yeah, you can't just do one trip and say you've done it all. you got to go back to the Fruit Loop and maybe try some other different spots. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Jamie, what exactly is the Fruit Loop? <laughs> it's a, the Fruit Loop is a collection of orchards and farm stands um, and like flower farms, uh, that are all there between Hood River and Mount Hood. And the, um, the organization that sort of, uh, manages this, this fruit loop has a map of all of these different places. So you can, you know, map out your day, go see as many as you can. We saw what, four or five different stops on the fruit loop, I want to say. Yeah. And it took yeah. most of a day. <laughs> so, um, definitely, you know, you got to sort of pick out your spots, go back, you know, in different seasons, go back different times of the year and see some other places. But 
we came away with fresh picked apples and pears and pluots and fresh cut lavender and fresh baked bread. Um, <laughs> we ate some delicious pear pizza. Um, there are wineries, there are breweries, there are cideries. There is um, everything you could want uh, and more, it seems. So, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's a, a relatively quick drive from folks who live in the Portland area. Um, but you want to give yourself a day to be driving around out there and um, stopping by these farm stands. If you want to spend the night in Hood River and spend a couple days on the Fruit Loop, that's a great way to do it too. Um, but I think this is just a really cool spot to get in the car and go explore. Absolutely. Um, again, furry friends, you can feed goats. You can see a steer who may or may not be very interested in seeing you. <laughs> Carlos the steer. <laughs> and I think uh, if I were to go back to the Fruit Loop, I would love to go a little bit earlier in the season um, when the lavender is in peak bloom. Um, we went towards uh, the end of the season where you could still pick uh, more of kind of like the dried lavender. Um, but I'd love to see like that field in full color. And I know there's multiple lavender fields. Um, um, but to go in peak bloom of that, uh, that would be so ideal to me. Yes. I, I, I'm on your frequency right there. I think that's a <laughs> great way to do it. All right. What other road trips? Okay. The other road trip I pulled out is a trip down Oregon route 47. Um, this is a, a little sort of back highway that I think a lot of folks probably don't know a lot about <laughs> it's it's not like a, a super popular travel corridor but i think everyone is driving past it um all the time so if you're on your way out to the coast you are probably going to cross over at some point oregon 47 but what i did decided to do last spring was just to drive the length of it so it runs from us 30 around the town of Klatskanai down mm -hmm. to um 99w in mcminnville so it kind of runs along the foothills of the coast range there um, in the Willamette Valley and um, passes through town of Vernonia, um, of, uh, I guess, like Klatskanai, Buxton, um, Gaston, Yamhill, Carlton, uh, all these sort of small towns there that are either in wine country or in these foothills of the mountains. And there's just a ton to do in this area. So, um, you know, folks who like to do outdoor recreation have LL Stubb Stewart State Park, which is one of the newer state parks in Oregon and has mountain biking trails, horseback riding trails, hiking, cabins, ah. stargazing, just really anything you want to do. Um, yeah. like you mentioned, there's a bunch of good wineries in the area. Um, there are some weird roadside attractions every now and then. I believe it's the, the tallest <laughs> barber pole in America. Um, oh, whoa. <laughs> which is like, uh, just really super random. Um, and some, I found some really good food too, as well out there in, uh, Forest Grove and Cornelius, that area. I uh, found a food cart pod there that just had everything you'd want. Um, oh really, gosh. really great stuff. So, you know, it was a fun little day trip. It's one that's a lot to do in a single day. Um, mm -hmm. If you wanted to do it and stay the night somewhere on there, you could do that. But I think even if you're just, you know, used to driving out to the coast along US 30 or US 26 um, or on, you know, uh, 18 going down there to uh, Lincoln City, pop off on Oregon 47, make a nice little loop of it and try something different. I think that's sort of the fun of exploring these little back highways is seeing these little small towns or little parks or restaurants. That otherwise, you may have just passed right by. Yeah, I love that. Oregon 47 has not been on my radar whatsoever. So <laughs> no, that is it sounds lovely, though. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, we just went through a ton of stuff. Uh, it sounds like 2023 is going to be quite packed with uh things to do and things on your list, Jamie. That's right. But Vicki, before we wrap things up here, I am dying to know about you, where you're hoping to go this year. So uh, any any uh, ideas, any, anything percolating for you? Yeah, there are a few things that just like Crater Lake was the thing that I was trying to get to last year. Now I'm like, all right, what are, what are some like quintessential 
Oregon things or places that I haven't been to. Uh, so number one on that list is making it out to Bend. Still have not been there. And uh, my partner who loves mountain biking uh, really enjoys Bend. So I would love to go out there and make a mountain biking trip out of it. Maybe stay at the Lodge Hotel again. Lovely dog friendly place. Um, so that's first on my list. Uh, and I still have not made my way to Rainier. So oh. I would love to make it up there. Yeah. Mount Rainier is fabulous. It's one of these places a lot of people in, um, in Oregon, like don't go to for some reason. Really? Um, I've sort of had this ongoing mission to get people to get up to Mount Rainier because it, <laughs> it really is only like, uh, I want to say about two and a half hours, maybe three hours from the yeah. Portland area. Um, uh -huh. which is as close as Bend is, um, or yeah. as close as a lot of other places. And people will go to those spots in Oregon all day, but don't think to go up into Washington to go to Rainier. And it is, I mean, it's the tallest mountain in the Cascade range and mm -hmm. it has uh, a ton of amazing hiking trails, waterfalls, places to stay, things to do. So I'm really excited to hear that you're interested in heading up there. And I'm super excited to hear about it once you do. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to get some great hiking in while I'm there. And, um, you know, the scenery from what I've seen on online and everything, you can't beat it. So no, it's stellar. I will be making it there at some point. Um, so next on my list, though, I mentioned this before, I'd really like to make my way down the southern Oregon coast a little bit further than Bandon. Hopefully, you know, get all the way down to Brookings and um, explore that rugged coastline down there. Um, I just want to make it like all the way down there, really <laughs> explore all of the southern coast. And uh, I know that I will be referencing it your beach roundups when I go down there, Jamie. There you go. That beach on the very, very far southern tip of the Oregon coast. Uh, Chrissy Field crosses right across the California border on the beach. Yep. And it's a very cool, uh, I think a very cool experience to have to cross the border there just walking on the beach. You don't even know what happens. Exactly. Exactly. So maybe sometime over the summer, I think I will do that. Will it be crowded? Maybe, but we'll see. <laughs> I need some sunshine and coast. That's right. Um, so these last two that are on my list, uh, kind of sneak peek at what we might have planned potentially um, for Peak Northwest video series, although I don't want to jinx myself. So uh, at some point, I would love to go whale watching on the coast. I know mm -hmm. that you have done this before, Jamie, oh, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's. I love doing doing gray whale watching on the coast. Maybe seeing a, an orca. Maybe seeing a humpback out there. Uh, very uh, cool experience. Yeah, that has been something that's been on my radar for a while. Just have not found a time to do it. But I hear that you may or may not know a few experts we could get in touch with. To oh, I definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> and then last on my list, obviously had a great time biking around the rim of Crater Lake. But I would love to go in the wintertime, experience the snow there, maybe do some snowshoeing at Crater Lake. That's on my bucket list as well. Um, snowshoeing at Crater Lake is supposed to be one of these just phenomenal experiences. And uh, I have not been able to make that happen yet. And I am really trying to make that happen this winter. There's a chance we might just have to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> But without a doubt, there is so much to look forward to in 2023. I feel like I finally got into like my groove of exploring and traveling in 2022, um, really getting out there this past year now that I feel like completely settled and living in Portland. So just so much more to come this next year ahead. Yeah. And, you know, I say this every year, but folks, if you are looking ahead to some travel ideas this year. Make your plans now. Go ahead and yeah. book those <laughs> yep. hotels, book those campgrounds. We're talking about January, first part of January. That yeah. means that, you know, six months ahead, you can already book stuff for the most part in June. So um, go ahead and do that. Jump on top of that while you have the opportunity. Don't wait until the last minute and uh, not end up going anywhere. I think, yeah. you know, <laughs> like like I was saying earlier, if, if you really want to make something happen, just book it. Yeah. Just book it now and you can always change it or cancel it if you need to, but, um, you know, get it on your calendar so you can get out there and enjoy this stuff. It's, it, it, there's no worse feeling as far as I'm concerned than, 
um, just not going out and doing things because, you know, you didn't, didn't make plans early enough or you didn't think about it, or maybe you demurred on it. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm such a big proponent in in making plans early. So this is the time to do it while we're excited, while it's winter, while maybe you're hanging out at home or you're looking ahead to the year ahead of you. Um, go ahead and and make those reservations now and, and enjoy this place that we call home. Absolutely. And there's nothing like, you know, kind of making your way through rainy season, knowing that you have something planned (laughs) ahead, something to look forward to uh, is a great way to do it. That's right. That's right. Maybe, maybe a tropical paradise is for you, or maybe it's just, you know, a nice campground somewhere on a mountain, whatever your paradise is, get out there, folks. Enjoy it. Absolutely. But that's going to do it for us today. So until next time, you can watch our videos on the Oregonians YouTube channel and view all of our travel and outdoors coverage on OregonLive.com slash travel, as well as HereIsOregon.com. Please leave us a rating or review if you enjoy the show. And if you want to support this podcast and our local journalism, please consider a subscription to Oregon Live. You can find details at OregonLive.com slash pod support. Also, if you're a fan of the show and you're interested in potentially sponsoring it, you can get in touch with our marketing people at advertise at oregonian.com. This episode of the show is produced by me, Vicki Connor, alongside Jamie Hale, Andrew Thien, and Elena Neal-Sachs. Stay safe and happy travels, everyone. Until next time, we leave you with this 10 seconds of Zen.